Could we see an orange helmet for the Denver Broncos in your, the near future? Welcome into your Denver Sports Daily for April 11th. Let's go. Taking you through your morning headlines, it's Denver Sports Daily with Rachel V. Hill. If the Broncos want to wear three different helmet shells this year, they can. As one of the teams going to a new uniform for the 2024 season, the Broncos will have the option of wearing three different helmet shells over the course of this season. All clubs will have the option of doing so in 2025. In this case, the alternate helmet or helmets can only be worn with an alternate third jersey or with a color rush or classic uniform template. Last year, the Broncos wore their second helmet shell for the first time since 2009 when they donned the white helmets to wear the color rush games um, for the New York Jets and New England Patriots. Personally, I was a huge fan of the color rush helmets. I think the white looks super sick. The D is obviously like historical, monumental. I loved those helmets possibly quite more than I even like the normal just horse head helmets as well. But you got the blue and you got the white. So could we possibly see an orange helmet? How would you feel about that? Are you here for like a complete all orange uniform? Or are you saying no, 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 we need to stick with it. We all remember the highlighter orange uniforms that they wore. Uh, Not a huge fan, especially if they decide to add the orange helmet. So let me know how you feel about it in the comments. Now, Damani Leach spoke on the new uniforms in Florida at the owners meeting and our very own Andrew Mason had a wonderful video of him talking. Take a listen. Yeah, I think I think part of the process that we went through was um, talking about what's important to the Broncos, what's important to the Broncos fan base, wanting to evolve and be new and different, but also being respectful of our history and traditions, understanding our surroundings. I think from a geographic standpoint, there'll be nods to that. I think people will be really excited about it. Now, what can't Peyton Manning do? He obviously has Omaha Productions, and that's staying in business with ESPN through 2034. The company has struck a long-term extension for the next nine years. This covers Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli, one of my favorite shows, as well as original series such as Peyton Places and Eli's Places. The deal coincides with ESPN's deal to air NFL games. I'm totally here for this. I think, first of all, the Monday night broadcast is one of the best of the business. I always learn so much about it. And I think the way they do interviews of one picking on people, which just makes it entertaining, but you learn so much. One of the like random things that I've learned through my time watching it was I'll never forget. Patrick Mahomes is super, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It just blanks my mind. He has to do things a certain way when it comes to every single game. I know that word's going to pop up to me at the end of the show, but he has to do those certain things every single time for game days, et cetera. And I just love that. Superstitious. There's the word I'm looking for. He's superstitious. Yes. And I feel like I would never have learned that if it wasn't for Peyton and Eli asking him a bunch of really random questions. I love how they bring on people that aren't involved with sports, just big celebrities. So I'm really excited about this deal continuing with ESPN. Um, again, just one of my favorite things, but I know some people aren't actually a huge fan of the alternate broadcast. So please let me, let me know in the comments if you are. Now, this next Mile High Minute is presented to you by our friends at Smashburger, Nuggets T-Wolves. It lived up to all of the hype last night. The Nuggets, for them to be able to win, they got to be able to survive the non-Jokic and Jamal minutes. And they did that in the first half. There were plenty of opportunities where they easily could have fallen back 15, 20 points. But no, even though they may have fallen back seven to nine points at times, They are still in the game, and it was so much fun to watch that game, and I know Ballerina was loud and so excited about it um, in the second half. 15 of Jokic's 41 points came in the third quarter. Jokic went off. And then we have to talk about Peyton Watson because, oh my gosh, Peyton Watson, you were an absolute stud. Six blocks, Christian Brown, Can we talk about the back-to-back, essentially, points slash dunks that he did? It was an absolute insane game. Obviously, the Nuggets came out on top, and now they control the um, outcome, essentially. If they win the next two, they're the number one seed. We all remember Michael Malone going on to say, okay, well, number one seed's not that important to us. Health is. Okay, well, everybody seems to be healthy right now. You are limiting Jamal Murray, so if you can limit him and still get the number one seed— Are we going for it? I think so. Another fun fact about Nikola Jokic, he outscored Rudy Gobert 24 to four in the second half. And Rudy is the defensive player of the year. Kevin Hart had a clip that went viral and said they cannot give Nikola Jokic any more MVPs. It's not good for the NBA. Well, I'm sorry. It's already been wrapped up. You just had a player who essentially dominated the defensive player of the year in the second half last night on national television. 
Sorry, it's done. It is what it's going to be. Like I said, though, they do control their own destiny. They plan San Antonio and Memphis. Both are eliminated for the playoffs. So really, I doubt they're going to care all that much about it. Uh, so hopefully, number one seed, fingers crossed. If you had to guess if they were able to do it, would you put your money down on it? Uh, now, speaking of putting money down, this isn't exactly a good update for some people, but um it is what it is. So Toronto's Jonte Porter, Michael Porter Jr.'s brother, could face expulsion from the league if the gambling-related accusations against him are found to be true. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver made the comment yesterday at a two-day meeting of the league's Board of Governors. Governors, He did not reveal any specifics about the investigation other than this probe is going on. And he did say, I have enormous range of discipline avail available to me. It's a cardinal sin that what he's accused of in the NBA. The ultimate extreme option I have is to ban him from the game. That's the level of authority I have here because there's nothing more serious. Porter has not played since the league said it was looking into betting patterns surrounding his on-court performance. Wow. That's honestly a pretty big one right there to be able to have the commissioner of the NBA come out and say that he, first of all, that it's a cardinal sin, but he has enormous range of discipline available to him. Ooh, it's not looking good for Porter right there. We will move on to the Colorado Rockies now because this also is not looking good. Just 18,311 people were announced as the attendance for the game yesterday. The smallest crowd for a non-pandemic restricted ball game at 20th and Blake in the last 10 years. That means two of the three smallest crowds in the last 10 years of Rockies baseball have come in the past three days as they drew just 18,870 for Monday night's game. They fall to three and 10 on the season. It doesn't honestly surprise me one little bit that we're seeing these numbers because I think honestly, people really are sick of it. Now you will have no baseball today, but you can tune in tomorrow for a 5.07 p.m. Mountain Time uh, first pitch. Find that one, just the timing on that to be a little unique. Now there is a little bit of breaking news coming out this morning. OJ Simpson's family announced that he passed away at the age of 76 from a long battle with cancer that has spread all across social media this morning. And we will move on to the WNBA as they are looking to bring more eyes to its broadcast. The league will be airing 36 of Indiana Fever's 40 games on national television. The Fever are opposed to draft Iowa's Caitlin Clark with the number one overall pick in the upcoming WNBA draft. Iowa's national championship game against South Carolina attracted 18.7 million viewers. Does not surprise me if a lot of those viewers will transfer over to watching these national games for women's basketball. I think it's going to be so exciting to be able to see this. And of course, the fact that nearly all of them are going to be on national television just shows you how much the game has grown. And I will be really interested to see because the numbers haven't been there specifically for the WNBA but for Caitlin Clark, people have bought in. And there's a lot of name, names like that. Angel Reese is another one. I think people are going to buy in more to women's basketball and follow these storylines of all of these women. It's absolutely incredible. Another storyline that's a little interesting right now is the Arizona Coyotes might be moving to Utah. Sources tell ESPN that the NHL is already crafting contingency plans related to the move. So currently, the Coyotes owner, Alex Marullo, is trying to purchase land for a new arena in Phoenix. But the NHL isn't confident in Marullo's plans. There are talks that Marullo could sell the Coyotes to Ryan and Ashley Smith, who own the NBA's Utah Jazz. As a result, the NHL is planning two different schedules, one with the Coyotes in Arizona and another with the team in Utah. Interesting for sure. Now, if you are a hockey fan today, you won't be watching the Colorado Avalanche. However, you can be watching DU in the Frozen Four. That is a 3 p.m. puck drop. They face off against Boston U today. Make sure you tune into that. Obviously, there is a lot going on with DU looking to go for their 10th championship. So, Always good. We're always rooting for DU. It's so much fun. Again, I'm I always just love that. Now, let's see. Comments. It's my favorite part of the show. Um, Rachel, you could have admit they have could have done a lot more with the white helmet. Mountains in the background or something. Plain white was just a copy of the brownies. I actually love the white helmet. I think you can't do too much. Like eventually it becomes dirty and messy. And I think it was such a clean helmet. I know some people really weren't a fan, but I was, I thought it looked great. 
I love that it incorporated the D. It made it really pop. Like, I'm worried about the uniforms, which, by the way, are going to be dropping here any day now, it feels like. This month is already flying by. With the mountains or with the Colorado flag, I'm just worried that they're going to be doing too much with it and it's going to come across a little childish, maybe a little kiddish. Um, Obviously, there's a ton of designers on all of these things, I'm sure. But I'm just like, the cleaner, the better. The simpler, the better, in my personal opinion. Um, Let's see. Uh, Defending champs helps having the number one seed, in my opinion. Oh, my goodness. I hope that they're able to get that number one seed. I think it's going to be so much fun if they are able to having home court just it always helps and having nugget nation in attendance and having more people be able to go out to games just a chef's kiss if we're being completely honest to you um rachel are you traveling to road playoff games for the abs so i will be in fact be traveling a lot this year i'm kind of getting ready i'm taking a few weeks of like okay everybody take a breather because i know up until the end of june it could be craziness i am in fact heading out to the nfl draft which will be really exciting hopefully we see the next face of the denver broncos get picked whether they move up or down or whatever it's going to be i will be out there and then i will be traveling it's going to be interesting to kind of see how schedules go back and forth because we obviously have the Nuggets and the Avalanche who both have an extremely good shot of being able to go super far into the playoffs. So depending on where each team is and how in close proximity it is to Denver, I will in fact be traveling. If there's any Game 7s, I'm hoping to be there no matter where it is for what team's example. So... Yes, I will be traveling. So buckle up, everybody. The In the Sports Office vlogs are going to be crazy. Get ready for a whole bunch of traveling vlogs as well. Popcorn time. Yes, it is. I'm so excited. Even last night, I was eating popcorn watching the game. Because you know what? I said, it's already practically the playoffs games. This is a playoff game. Also, did anybody else feel like Anthony Edwards literally grew up in one year? Like last year, I looked at him and I was like, oh, he's still like a kid. And now I looked at him, I was like, no, he is truthfully a man. He grew up so much in just a one-year span. It's absolutely crazy to me. Uh, Last one. Do you think Clark entered the WNBA because of Indiana versus other cities in the league? Um, I do not. I think no matter what, even though she got offered buku dollars to go elsewhere, I think that no matter what, she was going to go into the WNBA. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of Caitlin Clark. Honestly, I think that she's done incredible things and the way she's handled herself has been so respectful. So it's always fun to be able to watch her and it's always fun to hang out with you guys every single day. So I appreciate you spending a little bit of your morning with me here on Denver sports daily. I will not be on coffee break today, but make sure you tune in. Jake Shapiro will be down there and I know he's going to have a fun guest going guest going in to the Nuggets game, what it means now for the next two games, etc. So make sure you go hang out with him and drop a hello from me over there. But I appreciate you guys and I will see you uh, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for another episode of Denver Sports Daily. Get back to work, everybody. Bye.